Hello everyone! It's me again, Teacher John. This tutorial is for statistics and probability, a subject which is intended for grade 11 senior high school students in the Philippines. For today's objectives, at the end of the lesson, the learners will be able to calculate the Pearson sample correlation coefficient and solves problem involving correlation. So for today's topic, it's still under correlation and we will be discussing Pearson's sample correlation coefficient. So the Pearson sample correlation coefficient is also known as the Pearson R. So it is a test statistic that measures the strength of the linear relationship between two variables. So to find R, this is the formula to be used. So the correlation coefficient or the R is a number between negative 1 and 1. So R is greater than or equal to negative 1 but less than or equal to 1. So it describes both the strength and the direction of the correlation. So this is the summary of the table for the size of the correlation or when we compute for the R and its interpretation. So for values 0 0.9 to 1, or negative 0 0.9 to negative 1. So that's very high positive or negative correlation. So for 0 0.7 to 0 0.90, that's high positive correlation. And for negative 0 0.70 to negative 0 0.90, that's high negative correlation. So next we have 0 0.5 to 0 0.70. It's moderate positive correlation and negative 0 0.50 to negative 0 0.70. That's moderate negative correlation. Then if we computed 0 0.30 to 0 0.50, that's low positive correlation. And if it's negative 0 0.30 to negative 0 0.50, that is a low negative correlation. And if it's 0 0.00 to 0 0.30 or negative 0 0.00 to negative 0 0.30, that is negligible correlation or it could be said that there is no correlation. So from our previous lesson, so we have the values of R and the scatter plot. So for R equals to 1, so that is a perfect positive correlation. Then for R equals to negative 8, so it falls under a highly positive correlation. And for R equals 0 0.3, so that's low positive correlation. And if example R equals to 0, that's no correlation. So that's based on the table. Then R equals negative 0 0.3, that's low negative correlation. R equals negative 0 0.8, that's highly negative correlation. And R equals negative 1, that's a perfect negative correlation. So let's have an example and compute for the Pearson's correlation coefficient. So we have the table on the left. So it shows a summary of grades of 10 students in math and English. So we have X for math and Y for English. To solve for the Pearson sample correlation coefficient between the grades. So we already computed for the product of X and Y. So that's values of x multiplied by the values of y. 
then we have the square of x and the square of y. So these are the values that we would be needing in order to compute for the correlation coefficient. So we have the formula. So our n is 10 since we all have 10 samples. And then we just have to substitute the values. So we have n is 10 and summation of x and y is 7,715. Then we have the summation of x is 882 and summation of y is 880. Then we have the Summation of x squared is 77,934. Then summation of x is 882 then squared. Then we have the summation of y squared is 78,741. And the summation of y is 880. So our computed R is 0 0.81. So if we are to interpret, so therefore the student's grade in math and English has high positive correlation. So what does it mean? So when the grade in math, as the grade in math increases, the grade in English also increases. So let's have another example wherein um, the values are already given and then we just have to substitute for those values on the formulas. So for R, so we have the formula and then just substitute the values. So computed R would be 0 0.45. So how do we interpret that? So again, we would be looking up on the table and for the value 0 0.45, it is a low positive correlation. Then let's have another example. So let us have another example. So solve for R again and these are the given. So same formula, then we just have to substitute the values. And for our computed R, that will be 0 0.63. So how do we interpret this? So that is moderate positive correlation. Next, we have the last example. So again, same formula and then substitute the values. Then for the R, we have negative 0 0.01. So this means that um, that is a negligible or no correlation. So that's it for the topic for today. Now let us check what have we learned for today. So make an interpretation for each survey on the following item. For number one, the correlation coefficient between engine size and fuel consumption is 0 0.461. Number two, the correlation between the number of hours students spent on social media and their performance in an exam was found to be 0 0.753. Next, number three, correlation between the quality of life of deaf and teachers and their financial literacy level is 0 0.904. For number four, 
the correlation between the number of hours per week students spent studying and their average grade was found to be 0 0.883. And for number five, correlation between the stress level of teachers and their quality of life is negative 0 0.905. So now, let us check your answer. For number one, it is low positive correlation. For number two, high negative correlation. Number three is high positive correlation. Number four is a very high positive correlation. And number five is a very high positive, a very high negative correlation. So I hope you get all the correct answers and I hope you learned a lot today. So we're done for today and thank you very much. I hope you learned a lot and see you in our next lesson. Bye!